the rear seals rusted through um, as they tend to do on T4s. They got uh, replaced, new bits of steel welded in and I've been waiting for the weather to warm up and dry out so I can paint it. So we've got a little bit of rust coming through the primer so we'll sand this back and then get it yellow. Got to do the other side as well which is going to need more masking off. This is like the easier bit probably. Question is do I do this, learn and then do the other side after I've made my mistakes and learned from them or do I just get it all done today? Hmm. AA yellow. It's probably a closer colour than I thought it was going to be actually. Let's wait for it to go off. Let the sun get it for a few months and see what it looks like. It's better than grey anyway, and the metal's better protected. Hmm. That internal honeycomb is looking really stringy. This white often does that. I think I need to. Uh, give it a clean out. Hmm. What we're building is is this. This is actually, well, I've got a buddy, Dave. This is actually his knee. Um, I can't remember what he had wrong with his knee, but he had an MRI scan of his knee. So we collected the data, cleaned it up, and we can actually print out a bit of his femur, a bit of his tibia and fibula, right? And the aim is, this is, this is all his idea, not mine, um, the aim is to build the knee joint with the major ligaments to show how the knee works with these ligaments and then you can teach it functionally, right? So Dave's idea was to, we, we did this like five years ago and we're resurrecting it now because of some teaching we've got to do next year. Um, but the idea was to build a knee joint. It's not perfect because it's got his menisci in here and they don't move because they're made of plastic and things like that. But it's, it's pretty good, right? And it's, it's a real knee. And he was drilling holes to run cord through. So this is not really stretchy cord, just like ligaments aren't really stretchy. And they're running in roughly the right places to do the job of, there's the two cruciate ligaments in there. And then we've got the two, uh, whoop, collateral ligaments this is lateral here because there's the fibula the, uh, the lateral collateral ligament the medial collateral ligament right so he was drilling the holes and i said well let's um let's take the models put tunnels in them in software and then print them out and then we can thread cord through them put toggles on them and then share this with other people this is like this is part of the prototype right the idea was to tie off the cords and then i thought hey toggles they'd be good anyway so what we've got is a knee that moves like a knee does kind of like a hinge joint right anyway one of you guys asks asked me asked that okay so the collateral ligaments keep the knee stable so this is the purpose of this model right while these ligaments are in place i can't move this i'm trying to deflect this joint in valgus and varus um like i'm trying to pull the tibia that way and that way right 
and the collateral ligaments are preventing that. And the question was, what happens when you flex the knee? Why doesn't, you know, why is that still fit? Well, basically the, the collateral ligaments, they're still, they're still stabilizing the knee in that direction. There's a little bit of movement there, like I say, because the menisci haven't moved, it's not perfect and stuff, but the collateral ligaments prevent lateral movement when the knee is extended and when the knee is flexed. So I said I'd demonstrate it rather than describe it. Anyway, so the purpose of this model is that I can then like relax, I can lengthen. So that, that I've taken the tension off the medial collateral ligament, I think. And now, no, it's the wrong one. <laughs> I can't label these. That one then. So right, I've taken the tension off the medial collateral ligament and now when we do the, when we test the knee joint, oh look, I can move the knee, oh that's not right, I shouldn't be able to move the knee like that. If I can move the knee like that, that means the medial collateral ligament is damaged. So that you can do, you know, let's see look, when the knee's bent, when the knee's... So the, when you look, when you, when you flex the knee, because of the way the femur spins over the top of the tibia, that collateral ligament, the length of it, doesn't really change much. So it's still it's still stabilizing the knee in the same in the right way. I mean, don't forget we haven't put these ligaments in perfect positions because we've had to adapt to where they can go with the model and that sort of thing. And don't forget the real knee's also got you know a patella and some big muscles and stuff stabilizing it and that sort of thing. But hopefully, look, you get the idea. That's how the collateral ligaments continue to stabilize the knee, even when you flex it. Do, do, do. Models, they're useful because they kind of demonstrate theory, right? If you're gonna run 3D printers, it is well worth knowing how to take them apart and service them. Right, I'm gonna take the hot end off and I don't know, pop that out. I really like the uh, camo, so I go for this. Nice. It's a bit weedy, oh, everything's going. What's that me going? <laughs> I thought you are maybe too. I hope they're full of sand. But I am lovely and warm, and uh, 
having a very nice bob oh it's so nice to be in the sea not a bad place for it either I was hoping the weather because it's been quite calm this week might have cleared the sea up but no it needs a bit longer